Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas. And I'm Denise Rojas. And today we're going to make our own solar panels. This is the famous Harbor Freight solar panels that we've used in many of our previous videos. Today we're going to be using cells of a different type. There are three basic types of cells used in most solar panels. The least efficient and least expensive of these cells is the amorphous cell. Now this is what the Harbor Freight system is. This, the cells are deposited on glass usually, and there are kits that come with this. They're really tricky to work with. I pretty much don't advise you to try to make these. The nice thing about these, because they are deposited on glass, even though they are uh, less efficient than the other type of cells, the fact that you can just dunk these in water, you can pretty much do anything with them. They're really, really durable. There's also monocrystalline. Those are hexagon cells. Those are the most efficient and the most expensive. The cell that we're going to be working with today is polycrystalline. These cells are about a watt and a half, almost two watts a piece, and you can get these in lots of 100 or you can get them in just about any size. These cells, you have to tab them together. Now, one thing about these cells, is they're very fragile and um, you can see that and it didn't take much for you to break that not much at all so you got to be really careful when you work with these because that was a about a two dollar break that I just did right there so now one thing about these cells is they are uh, like I said a, about a watt and a half to two watts a piece but they're 0.5 volts so in order to get your voltage up to charge a battery say to 18 volts or 20 volts you need to chain together 36 of these or 40 of these depending on what voltage you're looking for. So what we're going to be doing is tabbing these cells together today. There's basically three different things that you need for this. You need tabbing wire which is a thin wire that's got uh, a deposited metal on it. This actually solders to the cells. There's also a bus wire. It's basically the same thing as tapping wire, but it's a little thicker. It's a lot thicker, so it handles more amperage, and you use this to tie your strings of cells together. There is also um, some silver solder, which basically you use to enhance the the soldering joints. You also are going to need a soldering iron. Now, they usually recommend that you use a 65 watt iron. We're going to use one a little bit less than that. We're going to show you the basics for this, and in future videos, we're going to show you how to add a lot of components to the solar panels. So we're going to get started. I'm going to plug the soldering iron in. One thing that Dan forgot to mention is that he's going to be using this flux pen. Now this, this pen, it, it actually smells like rubbing alcohol, and what it does is it opens up the cells so that way it can accept uh, a better soldering joint. When you get your cells, they usually come in a bundle like this, and as I said, they are extremely fragile. This is another one that I broke. So you want to be very careful with these and handle them with care, and I'm going to show you a close-up of these and explain exactly what's going on with them. What you're going to notice with these cells is that there's a series of small white lines and two big lines. This is where your tabbing wire goes. Now on the back side, there's also six little joints where you solder the tabbing wire too. Most solar cells like this are usually uh, negative on the front, positive on the back. So in theory, you could take a bunch of them and stack them together like batteries to build up the voltage. The problem is only one cell would get the sunlight, so you can't do that. So what you end up doing is you end up taking tabbing wire and you run it down the length of this and you leave some extra and the next one attaches to the back of the next cell and you go from there. So you end up tabbing them together like this in long chains. Hmm. And we're going to lay it flat like that. Now you take your flex pen and you basically just go right up and down it. Now it's a good idea not to drink a lot of coffee the day you do this like I did because the steadier your hands are the better off you are. You want to have your tab wires to be twice the length of the cell. Now I went ahead and cut these in advance. You basically just measure it double it over. It's a good idea to do all of your tabbing wires in advance. That way you don't have to come back and do this step. Um, also, be careful with your soldering iron. I just grabbed it in the wrong spot and burned my fingers, so I'm going to have two nice blisters. But you basically try to get it started so you know where you're going to end. And you hold it down. And the tin that's on the outside of this should or 
adhere to this and you can see that that locked down now you're gonna hold it the length just like I have it you take your soldering iron and you hold it flat like this and you just gradually work it down the length of the uh, the cell Now that you have two of these tabbed, you're going to take them and flip them over and you're going to attach them like this. You're going to want to get this tabbing wire nice and flat. Get it nice and straight and you're going to arrange them like this. Now it's a good idea to have a, uh, a setup of exactly what you're doing. Some people will build a little form so that these are in a perfect straight line and they don't look like crap whenever you're done. but you do is you bend the wire up and you take your flex pen and you want to put it on get it going put it on every single one like that and now this is an area where the solder actually comes in and you can actually use it for this basically Get yourself a nice little bead of solder on there. And what you're going to do is get your tabbing wire position. Now I'm going to use a little clamp to hold it down because this wire does build up some heat. Um, I'm going to get the first one in place over here. We now have two cells that are joined together. So we're going to go outside and we're going to see if this produces one volt real quick because you want to test these as you go along. The time to replace a bad cell is now versus once you're completely done with your project. Now the way that you want to test these is you attach your negative lead to the front which is this tabbing wire here and then you can touch pretty much anywhere on the back. Alright so you basically take and we're going to test it. I'm going to touch this to the back of this. Uh, we're hooked here. And you can see that we're getting one volt out of this, which is these two together produce the one volt. And if I cover them up, they drop. So these two panels, these two cells are actually good to go. So what you, you're going to have to do in order to get a... Uh, something to charge 12 volt batteries like these over here what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to do this 36 times total so you're gonna need 36 of them to get to the 18 volts that you need so this is what we did just now um, got a couple blisters in the process and uh, you can see it's a pretty tedious process to do there's doing it this way comes out to be about two dollars a watt maybe a little bit less than that as you can see these are very fragile they break easily so you gotta encase them really good so you need to put a glass cover over them you need to seal this so moisture doesn't get in there there's really a lot to the DIY process with this you also to, to encase it does somebody improv on that or is there a well, professional case to use we're gonna be doing that in future videos we're gonna be actually um, trying different ideas in order okay. to uh, you basically make a frame encase it in glass, seal it so that moisture doesn't get in there. Some people will seal these in resins or waxes and that's a good way too. You just, uh, it is a pretty tricky process. I personally don't really see 
I don't really necessarily have the patience to do an entire panel. I, we're going to do it for a video. Well, it seemed a little bit hard to get the soldering and, and the strips on there just right. Well, uh, but within time, it, it, would, it would come a lot easier. Yeah, it's definitely a practice thing. And our soldering iron, by the way, is not a good soldering iron for this. You want to get, huh? You want to buy a good one that gets a really good heat build up to it and it'll be a lot easier this uh it looks great and so somebody would have to get this how many times would they have to produce this for to charge a 12 volt battery you would need to put these uh 36 of them to get to 18 volts or if you wanted 40 uh 20 volts you would need to do 40 of these so does it go in a, in a row or well, how does that what work? people usually do is they'll do 18 of these and then 18 of these and then tie those together so that jumps the voltage up. Okay. And then the bigger panels, if you want to increase the, because uh, 36 of these would produce about 60 watts, 65 watts. So the Harbor Freight system that we have outside is 45 watts. So if you put 36 of these together, make sure I'm doing the math. Yeah, if you put 36 of these together, you would have a more powerful system than the Harbor Freight out there. So it would cost you probably about a hundred bucks to do that with these cells the tabbing wire you have to take into the account that you're gonna break some along the way okay. and then you have to add the, the case cost to it because sealing these uh, the Harbor Freight system has been out in the Sun it's been out in the rain it's been dipped in water some of the smaller panels and they work fine this is gonna be up to you how well that that works out. can it be embedded in in acrylic or is that too yeah you can you can encase this in resin you can definitely do that um, or okay. different types of resin you just want to make sure that the contacts all stay good together, that sort of thing. And it's really important to test these as you go along because it won't work. Also, you also need to add some blocking diodes to this because uh, you don't want it to drain your battery. You need to make sure the voltage only goes in one direction. Uh, this process is good for somebody who's on a budget, who has a lot of time on their hands, and who is very patient and wants to do it yourself. If, if you're not that type of person buying a pre-manufactured system, going to cost you probably double or a little bit more than that but that's your call with it so hmm. well I definitely think it's worth completing as many as we have and and and, and you know embedding it into something to, to for a future video right we spent about $400 on 150 cells a little bit more than that and that's the equivalent of about 300 watts so if we could hmm. get one together a 300 watt solar panel is well, we wouldn't do one, but if 300 watts of solar panels is pretty expensive to buy, so yeah. it's just a... I think the challenge is worth the effort on it. Um, you do get better at this, by the way. I, I, this was like the third one that I did, and again, the soldering iron, crappy. The, um, if you go to our website, we will have information on where you can buy all of this stuff. There's different people that sell it on eBay, that sort of thing. We'll have some links to that, and great. you can at least buy some cells, buy some of this stuff, and mm -hmm. see if it's for you. That sounds great. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. And I'm Denise Rojas. Thank you for watching, and enjoy our videos. Oh, and don't grab the soldering iron in the wrong place. That really hurt. <laughs>